It's a rocket and jet powered car designed to travel at a thousand miles an hour. It's 44 feet long, weighs over seven tons, and it has 135,000 horsepower. What you're looking at isn't just the fastest car ever designed, it's an engineering adventure that we're sharing with the world. The Bristol-based Bloodhound project is an ambitious attempt to smash the land speed record using a completely novel car that travels over a thousand miles an hour. Uh, it's powered by both a jet engine and a rocket. Speed is inspired by Bloodhound and we thought it was a tremendous opportunity to motivate children in schools to learn more about engineering. So what we're doing is we're making available state-of-the-art high-performance computing to them in their classrooms uh, with the challenge that they can actually tweak the design of the Bloodhound supersonic car and race against each other and also of course the Bloodhound itself. It's really the first time that school kids will be able to access high-performance computing from the classroom. We're working with the University of Bristol, who very kindly made uh, their high-performance computer available for free. Uh, some local companies like Mentor Digital have done a phenomenal job in designing an interface that, that really bridges the gap between an engineering tool and the classroom. The key challenge here is trying to interface um, high-end performance computing built for engineers with an accessible front end for students to be able to interact with the Bloodhound car. And what we've done is we've really aimed to simplify the whole experience of modifying Bloodhound with very over accentuated graphics. We've done a blueprint style sketch of the Bloodhound itself and you can for example change the angle of the nose, the width of the rear axle, the angle of the body to the ground, you can change the elevation of the body and the width of the wheels as well. You can even choose here when to fire the rocket. Once your results are in, at certain points during the journey you can click and load real-time renders of how the vehicle is being affected and the force is acting on the vehicle at any point during the flight. And it's a real great learning opportunity to show students how to analyse graphs and also, of course, to adapt the vehicle itself and to try and beat the bloodhound. So obviously the kids are going to be motivated by the competition. Uh, it is a race at the end of the day and the fastest car will win. Uh, so at the end of the year uh, down at the At Bristol Science Centre we're going to have all the kids involved will be coming together uh, and we'll be, we'll be uh, withholding the winner's name until that event. So it could be quite an exciting place to be at the time. But in addition to, to the straight race, um, we're also going to be giving out prizes for the best presentation. I, kids will be talking about the sort of things that they've learned and done during the project um, and we'll also be giving some recognition of the, the teams that have really uh, put a lot of effort and done a lot of work on that. But really the engagement with the, the school kids has been done by the STEMNAT ambassadors and there's a brilliant national network of those. Locally we work with graphic science and, 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 and they've, they've got a lot of experience in bringing engineers from lots of walks of life into classrooms to share their experience and insights. We see this as a pilot project. Um, obviously it's focused on Bristol at this stage and it, uh, I think it, it's very significant to the local developments in high-speed networking being made available to schools um, but really there's no reason to restrict it to cars uh, and, and I think a lot of organizations would benefit from inspiring young people about their challenges by making them available in this kind of way so we really would like to scale it up to a national program.